It's been a year. I've been working as a data analyst in central London for a year now, and it's it's been interesting. And in this video, I'm going to talk about everything, the good, the bad, and even the unexpected. Hey everyone, my name is Janaid, and I'm a graduate data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. This year went by so, so quick that I didn't even realize it had been an entire year. Working in central London, or I think any major bustling city makes time go by very very quickly. I remember before starting my role other analysts had told me that you know it'll been a year and you won't even realize it'll go by in the blink of an eye. At the time I said oh well it's still a year I should still feel the entire year but they were absolutely right. This year went by so quickly I'm a year in and they were absolutely right. And that's an interesting thought for the future. Um, I've actually actively started to be more present, to try my best to be more present. I've made a point to take a step back, detach myself from situations and different milestones and make a point to remember them. But that being said, it has been a very, very enjoyable year and I've learned much more than I'd originally expected or anticipated. When I started, I had preconceived notions about, I mean, the image of a career in finance is often painted out to be that of manic stock market analysis and that it has the aspects of all the aspects of a high-flying career. I found that the reality is that while there are moments of success when a project gets completed before the deadline and all those hours you spent working on those Excel models pays off, there is actually a really high level of learning involved as well. For me, this was my first corporate job, my first proper corporate job. I'd done stints as um, intern at investment banks before during summer at university, spring weeks and summer internships. But this was my first proper full-time role and naturally at the beginning I did think it was going to be easier than it was. My initial expectation was hey it's my first job out of university they probably won't give me too much responsibility I'll probably be just computing basic financial models and creating presentations. The reality, the reality was a bit different, it was quite a bit different. The analytics division that I joined within the company was quite new and it operated like its own little startup so there was a lot of work right from the get-go right from the beginning there was a lot of work to be done and that's the difference i've observed between working for a large investment bank and a slightly smaller financial services firm in entry-level roles for a large company i think there's less pressure on you to perform to a very high standard simply because the larger company can afford a lot of manpower so that if something does go wrong or if there's some slack in the rope of the project you're working on they can just allot more manpower towards that project there's usually someone there who's available to help you out if something if you need help with something or if something's gone wrong that ultimately means that it's unlikely that the outcome of a major project is reliant solely on you in a smaller startup style environment i think there's less people available to help or bail you out if something goes wrong or if you fall behind on a project most other people tend to be busy as well and in my first year in my experience um, you're held much more accountable and so that means you have to learn the ropes very very quickly the overall development is much much more rapid and i was lucky in the sense that i was surrounded by so many great analysts and senior members of management who were able to help me out at every step of my development. Leading on from that, there wasn't a point where I was given a project and said, hey, Junaid, do this, 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 do this step, this step, this step, this step, figure out what's going on, hand it over to me and we'll complete the project. It was more along the lines of, here's the problem, go figure it out. In my first week, I was attending training sessions, understanding the company's workflows and infrastructure. And alongside that, I'd been given two projects to start work on. So the learning curve was quite steep, but it was different from the learning that I'd done at university in the sense that it was much, much more practical. There was very little theoretical learning I had to do, which I was glad. I mean, that's to be expected in a work environment. Everything is more practical. And I actually prefer the practical aspect of learning more than the theoretical. I've done so many years of theoretical learning. I think I've done my fair share of theoretical learning. So the practical side was a joy to be able to learn and work with. There's also always something to continue learning and stay on top of. I found that in a fast paced financial landscape environment, whatever it is, there's always something you have to continue learning or stay on top of. I'm always constantly learning new tools, uh, techniques, new developments within the industry. Uh, there's news, you have to stay on top of all the news that's happening within the financial industry. That's a big one. Working within the financial industry isn't an entirely new concept to me, but working within finance for an extended period of time had its own set of challenges and demands. I've had to do everything from decipher complex financial reports to add what I can from my limited knowledge to strategic discussions that 
are being had and of course I'm also always constantly helping clients with any of their business decisions through the analysis that I've conducted. So in my experience from day one there was a lot of individual responsibility like I mentioned before the environment was a lot like a startup so you expected to be able to hold up your end of a project otherwise everything falls behind the deadlines are missed I remember I was working on a project quite early on I think I've told the story before I think it was two weeks into my role I was working on a project and however many times I tried to compute the result I just kept getting the wrong output the number of times I tried to figure out where I was going wrong I went through every single step I just couldn't figure out where the problem was I remember the project deadline was that afternoon and that was approaching fast and I still wasn't able to figure out what the problem was so eventually I just ended up scrapping the entire project and starting from scratch and that's just one example of the steep learning curve that I had to deal with but I think ultimately that pressure is good for development I mean there haven't really been two days that have been the same sure there are days when you need to stay patient and not get frustrated because something isn't working but overall the variety of projects and analysis that I've been able to have my hand in has been really really good in terms of my professional development for example one day I could be validating a pricing model that's been sent to me by an insurance company so that involves working with all the pricing parameters that they've used I'll likely be calculating NPV and other financial ratios on other days for example I think three weeks ago I was putting together a dashboard for a client to show how well they'd done in the past fiscal year depending on the decisions they'd made and how that might have changed if they'd taken a different route in certain business decisions if they'd taken a different route how that would have changed I had to deal with so many clients from so many different industries across the world I didn't inherently expect to be able to do that as early on as I did my expectation was I'd be able to deal with clients much much further down the line once I'd learned the ropes once I'd integrated myself within the team and my manager was confident that I'd be able to confidently handle their clients I thought that was going to be much further down the line but quite early on my manager put me into client meetings and had me deal with databases so one database we were trialing for the team I had to set up a string of meetings with that database to understand what they could offer us and how we could integrate them into our workflow and then report back to my manager each client is unique and and there have been some great stories about how people have navigated their careers over the years and got to where they are now and that's also been very helpful in maintaining a high level of learning another really unexpected thing that's resulted as a part of my role that data practices within my personal life have improved tenfold the way i store deal with and use the data that i have within my own setup has gotten so much better and that's and that's as a direct result of working within a team that focuses so much on data ever since i started this youtube channel the number of media files i have to deal with the video images audio has just skyrocketed into multiple multiple terabytes of storage i think if i was to take a single copy of all of my data a single copy that would sit at just a shade under 10 terabytes initially it was so difficult to deal with to try and find something the video files would be in one place all my folders were messed up and it would be an absolute nightmare to try and find for example a sound effect the whoosh sound effect this would be absolutely buried within numerous files and files and files and it'd be a nightmare to find i would just download it again it would take absolutely ages to find something important but now what i've managed to do is use the best practices we use at work within my personal life and setup as well as an example the naming conventions we use at work are so efficient and easy to use they're specifically designed for analysts to be able to easily locate and integrate them into their own workflows windows also understands those naming conventions really well and it just makes it so easy to use it's such a painless and quick process so i've adopted these naming conventions and the overall organizational infrastructure that we use at work within my personal setup as well and that's made my workflow so much more efficient and that's made working with multiple terabytes of footage and media so much easier another thing is my overall data practice has improved before i had a lot of important data stored on one hard drive yes a single hard drive and I know that I of all people should know better I know that but you get lazy I'd never had a hard drive fail on me before and so that became my primary drive with no backups I started using it for everything storing important information editing off of it was fast enough to edit off of so everything was going through that file one day I plugged it in and it just failed to show up in Windows file explorer restart computer unplug plug again restart nothing 
the panic I felt in that moment. That drive contained about four terabytes of important slash vital information. I ultimately ended up sending that drive off for some very expensive data recovery and with my fingers crossed they'd be able to wrangle something together and recover all my data and thankfully they managed to fix it and I got all that data back recovered. If I'd lost all that data that would not have been a good day but ever since then I've invested a lot of money into storage solutions and important data now has three copies at the very least and less important data again has at the very least two copies. Western Digital if you're watching this feel free to sponsor me and send me a NAS that would really help with all my storage problems. Now this point's likely to be controversial because almost all of the analysts that I've spoken to say that their jobs are entirely nine to five and that they rarely have to work any more than that. I guess it does depend on the industry or even the company you're working for and I think that in in industries aside from finance and banking you're unlikely to be working more than your working hours but that's something to bear in mind in especially in finance and banking you're essentially on call 24 7 more or less my hours are technically nine to five but working in finance means i'll be getting messages from my associates and colleagues at odd hours depending on where they are in the world and whether we're working with some quick turnarounds at work there is a reason for this and that's because i could be working with a client who's in a different time zone and they need help with something at 8 p.m gmt in fact we don't even get bank holidays those bank holiday hours are given to you as part of your out of office hours again simply because you could be working with an international client and that means a deadline is approaching and that you're working on that bank holiday since not everyone observes the same bank holidays across the world there are times when i've had to wake up early with the sole purpose of waiting for the stock markets to open or waiting for a company to release an annual report or AGM. I usually try and wake up early anyway but not with the purpose of work. That'll usually be to work out or get some work done while everyone's asleep. Alternatively sometimes I'll have to stay late during especially during busy periods. There have been times when I've come home at 7, 8, 9 p.m. Now this wasn't exactly a surprise. If you've done enough research beforehand, which I had done, then you know that this is part of the day-to-day -day routine. But again, overall, it's something that is negative. Your work does follow you home and especially at higher levels, there are times when the work-life balance lines are blurred. Again, I did sign up for all this, so I'm not complaining, just outlining the reality. Overall, if I could describe the last 12 months in one word, that word would, it would probably be learning. I've learned a lot and I think that's to be expected for any analysts that going into your first ever role, you'll be learning a lot. I mean, you can have really good technical knowledge of just about everything, but a firm or company has specific needs, specific workflows, specific strategic outcomes that they're working towards. So I think that learning never goes away, whether you hop from company to company or whether you're working with clients who have different needs. I mean, if two clients come to me and I'm putting it together a dashboard for both, you might think that since you're doing the same, those two things are the same. But the reality is that clients have different strategic outcomes that they're aiming for as well. So you'll have to adapt and understand what they're looking for. So there's so much variety that I've been able to learn about within the world of finance, banking and being an analyst. And that's helped my development a lot. There are still things I want to improve on. I'm always looking to progress as fast as possible, but it has only been a year. So I do need to show some patience. I hate being stuck at one level for an extended period of time, but I have to be patient. There will be opportunities for progression so that's something I'm really, really looking forward to. Within the team, there's a running joke that I'm going to be the next CEO of the company. And every internal email I send is signed off as Janaid Ahmed, CEO. Now, admittedly, that is quite tongue in cheek, but a little bit of ambition never hurt anyone. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. This was much more a sort of sit down and talk to the camera type of video. I hope it gave you an insight into what it's been like working in London as an analyst for the past year and we've managed to cover some of the positive, the negative and even the unexpected points and aspects in this video so that's good. I'll be making another video along the same lines as this one. I think that's the plan to try and help anyone who's trying to become an analyst, anyone who's interested in the career, anyone who's an aspiring analyst if you're an aspiring analyst so make sure to keep an eye out for that video as well hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already if this video is useful leave a like and check out some of my other videos follow my instagram if you haven't already and all right everyone have a great week everyone and i will see you guys in the next one